<clears throat> All right, so I can finally take a break from my stressful trying to pretend that I know what I'm doing, even though I admit all the time that I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, dang it. It didn't do anything. Water. Water, water, okay. water. So, um... The animation yeah, where yeah, you so were joining. Was. So joining me today <laughs> is Even. Hi, hi, hi. And, um, before, yeah, so before we get into what we're actually going into... I have a journey that I need to rant about to you. So, um, and that actually hey. requires me to save and close down this version of Blender. <clears throat> so I have... Um, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Um, so I have this... I had this idea that I wanted to do for a long time, which is this um, kind of splash screen for when I actually do um, other video games and stuff with my, you know, with friends and stuff. But they aren't story based games, so they're not stuff that have a, like a linear, like you know, it's a beginning. You have this main, you know, this main protagonist, and you go all the way and you defeat a main bad guy at the end, and you, you know, it's like battle royales and puzzle games and things that don't really have an end to them. And so the idea that I had for that was um, this uh, sort of this this vehicle that just kind of like teleports and jumps through these like different dimensions sort of stuff. So um, the one that I have is da, 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 version two. Uh, yeah, Fortnite could be one of them. <laughs> um, all right, so let me open up a media and let me try to share this with y'all. Media source. Media source, add source, bruise. So this is like version point three you know this is like the very very first version that um opener transition is this the one? Oh, jeebus i don't even oh i had i had the file ready to go and i don't know where it oh wait here it is balls desktop version one <laughs> Point six. I think this is the one. All right. I, um, I am dreaming spaghetti. Um, drawing some like broken window like thing that this demon gateway fungus that Tyler probably hopefully introduced. No, not yet, because I was going to do that after I oh. ranted about this thing. So, this is <laughs> kind of so this is kind of generally how it yeah. goes, right? So it's this vehicle. And it just kind of um, shifts through these different um, worlds. And in this version, I have a... I feel like I'm going to get dysentery. <laughs> in this version, you know, it's just this very flat kind of 2D thing. Because I kind of wanted to aim for like a like the paper, like the Chinese paper puppet things. Mm -hmm. um, and... Like I had other, I had other versions down. So like I had like this forty-five degree angle because that's a full, that's a full, fully three D wagon thing. But um, you know, when you take a three D object and you move it into an orthographic space, it turns two D. So <laughs> whatever. Um. But yeah, so basically that's just what it does, you know, and then it just kind of cycles through and it loops until everyone's ready and audio is all taken care of. And then I transfer from this thing to a different thing. Um, the almost the night when I finished this version of okay. it, cool, cool, um, cool. I saw on Twitter someone um, someone pointed to um, someone pointed um, an artwork to me of a similar sort of thing, except 
instead of 45 degrees and my my wagon was rolling away from the camera this guy had it had a car on a road and it was this very 70s kind of vibe and rolling toward the camera and i looked at that and i was like damn it that that <laughs> that artist did everything in their in their still image that i wanted to do in my animation so i took that and i um i basically took all the angles and i tried to redo my deal and i came up with okay. this thing so let's see if this pops up And by the way, my name is Evenstar, and you can find me on Instagram on Evenstar Long, which I um, haven't posted things in a while, kind of lazy. Okay. No, I'm pretty sure Tyler said it, but you know. Um, I'll just make this larger, I guess, or not. Fine, whatever. Yeah, no worries. Sam. Um. Uh. Wait, did you added a car? I'm well, in a car. yeah, it was my, it was kind of my reference. Um, so, yeah, so making the car, making the road, making the backdrops, all that super easy. Um, but then trying to make everything move was a lot more difficult. And then I had this issue of, okay, so how do I want to transition between the worlds and dimensions? And I was like, well, I could do a portal thing or I could do some other thing. And so I went with the portal thing and I was like, all right, well, I need a transition. That was a pain to try to remember how to do. And then trying to make the portal go away was an, another thing entirely. Mm -hmm. um, and then what, what we're going over right now is actually a fluid simulation in which I... I hate with such a vengeance anything that has to do with water with fluid simulations in any program because it's just <laughs> they never they never do what you want to have happen <laughs> it's just like I, I like I, water so so everything yeah everything up until this point everything except what's the moving blue um, all of that took about like 15 minutes. The, the next eight hours of that day was spent specifically towards making this blue thing move and act somewhat like water. Mm. Uh, I, I hate it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this, this transition of having one thing kind of dissolve into another object, that was, act, that was, com that was comparatively easy compared to compared to water simulation <laughs> um but yeah so i the road um before the road had um actual little um traffic dividers and stuff like that um i actually did have a crash because the water simulation i did i did one thing too much for my computer and the entire program crashed and um all of my materials and stuff were there, but the textures didn't save. So, and I'm kind of angry because a lot of my distancing, as far as the animation goes and the speed at which the car travels, was based on those line, on those traffic lines. <laughs> so, um, I might have a really annoying time ahead of me, but that's what took up most of my couple weeks that I've been doing that. That's <laughs> that sucks. What does that wow. um, water simulator thing? W will it be able to simulate um, uh, like whitewash and stuff, bubbles? So I think that's that'll make that feel like so it if, exists if together. Blender with came, if, if Blender came in a box at a store, the answer is yes, <laughs> but. <laughs> um, from my from the way that I've been trying to do it, no, with a big question mark. <laughs> um, 
only because I don't know. I I don't I don't know what I'm doing with um with the water simulation. So anyways, that's kind of my rant. Um, that's that's kind of what I've been focusing on and that's probably what I'll be focusing on for the next couple like weeks to come because I just have, I really only have two hurdles left before I fine tune everything and make um, the correct vehicles flow into the correct follow-up vehicle. And the two, the two hurdles are to get the water simulation better and then figure out a way to make the backdrop flow from one thing to another. So just like how the vehicles flow from one from one vehicle to the next vehicle, like from dimension to dimension, um, the backdrop is also going to change. Just like how in the first um, animation, um, you know, it changed from game to game. I want to do the same thing, but now it's at this 45 degree angle. I think that's going to be a lot harder but I just have to figure out a method to do it. And I already have a few theories on how to do it, which <clears> are cheating methods, because it's just putting up a... Um, cheating is the name of the game in all green, Just a thick green screen, and <laughs> just cheating my way through it. But um, yeah, I just I just went crazy over this water simulation for the, like, the past 13 hours, and I never got around to actually testing out those cheating theories. So anyways, all that stuff aside, so that's what I've been doing, and that's what I've been super angry with for, for like, a while. And the reason why I was saying that, um, why I was kind of texting to you, like, all depressed-like and stuff, is that um, I don't know if I can get the mileage that I would like out of this animation with as much time as I'm spending on it. You know what I mean? What's your alternative? And would you just, know, just give it up and be good with that? Well, yeah, I mean, like, the alternative is I could, yeah, just just throw it in the bin and just be like, yeah, I don't need a splash screen. Uh, there's so many other there's so many other channels out there that don't have a splash screen, but it's like, but that's not... I want... I want... It's like want a it. film crew, you know? I want a stage. I want a nice film set. <laughs> and Blender is my method to get there. But I just need to develop the skills to get to the point where I can get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that aside, <clears throat> today's focus, <laughs> as little as there has been. Burr, 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 is this a game or an animation? Uh, animation. Sorry. Um, burr, 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 burr. Okay, so today's focus is um, we've been going through um, the Dungeons and Dragons monster manual sort of thing, and I've been going a little bit off road with um, D and D Beyond as a as a main source. So two weeks ago, because we had a bit of a vacation hiatus, mm. um, we did the Aboleth in a crazy water based creature, and today. We're in here with the AKs, AKL or something, I guess. Um, the Alkalith or the oh, Jesus. Alkalith. Yeah. Yeah, Alkalith. Um, so its basic description is an Alkalith is easily mistaken for some kind of foul fungal growth that appears on doorways, windows, and other portals. These dripping manifestations conceal the demonic nature of the Alkalith, making what should be a dire warning appear strange but otherwise innocuous. Um, wherever Alkaliths take root, they weaken the fabric of reality, creating a portal through which even nastier demons can invade. Um, I guess I'm just going to... I'm just going to disable your quote-unquote face cam because it's like not working out for me in <laughs> okay um <clears throat> um yeah so the alkalith is um at it at face value it should look like a some sort of fungal growth it's just a thing on a doorway that shouldn't really be there <laughs> um 
And let me just, there we go. And this is why you clean your house with blue water. Yeah, I mean, okay, so this concept, <laughs> this concept has kind of existed for, um, I don't really want to say like a while, but it, it, it the concept does exist uh, around places. So, um, for example, the <laughs> the dust bunny, for example, kind of is one of those ideas of which it's this other it's this other entity that when you think of it, you don't really you know you don't really pay it too much mind, but if you give it enough. You know, if you give it enough literary devices, then suddenly it, it can become this, this other, you know, this other thing, this even this danger, you know, that just kind of lurks underneath your beds. And in this case, in your door frames or in your in your window sills. Um. So for a while, I was reading through, and it kind of it kind of. Um, was weird to me in a sense because it was saying that it was the spawn of Jubilex. And for those of you who don't actually like pay attention to D&D &D or want to stay away from that, you know, that heavy nerd type stuff, um, Jubilex is basically this sort of other god. Demon pudding. Of the, yeah, of the goos, of the oozes. So if you've ever seen the old film, um, is it called It? Or the thing? No, the thing is something different. The thing. <laughs> it has clowns. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's clowns. What? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh. This this week has been very mentally stressful for me, with specifically just the water, um, the water simulation that I'm kind of fried right now. Um, coffee. <laughs> But yes, um, it's basically that. So it's it's the spawn of all the oozes that try to go out and eat fleshy things and consume all creatures. But this, um, the fact that it's a spawn of that, but it opens up these portals to the abyss, which is this area for demons and devils and stuff like that. I think it's demons mostly, right? Demons. Because devils is hell, right? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Um... So yeah, so that really confused me because I thought Jubilex had his own dimension somewhere, but it turns out he's in the twenty second. He's in the twenty second ring of the abyss. So now, it, now it makes sense to me. I was like, oh okay. So he sends out his spawn out there to like make these little portals to trick people into you know, or not trick people, but to hopefully accidentally throw people into the abyss and then if as they descend down to try to find their way out they'll eventually find their way into his domain its domain nom, 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 can nom. a ooze have a, can a ooze have a have a gender um and then jubilex's main concept is to just consume and absorb so the alkalith is like is like the most innocent but probably the craziest of all the like of all the like the 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 stupid creatures out there i think like kobolds the little lizard creatures they may get their they may get a bad rap for being like the weakest and the silliest creatures but this thing is probably like the weakest creature but has the craziest outcome potential <laughs> i think Ooh, that means that you didn't read very far back into the history of D D. Back into third and second edition. Well, if you're talking about the dangers that kobolds can actually do. No, I'm talking about the alkalith. Oh. Yeah, look, I don't know how many times I have to go back to it, and I'd rather not go back to it, but water simulations? My nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, well, I mean, on that case... Um, you're a lot better at working and talking than I am. So what of the Alkalith have you researched and found out? Or well, I was reading that, like, in the old editions, um, 
that like if we just look at fifth edition's powers and stuff like yes it can open up doorways um <laughs> if it kind of kind of completes the doorway uh and that it can like um touch you with these like pseudo tentacle things and like acid on you but its actual more powerful thing is the fact that it stays like if it wants to it just looks like a regular fungus so you don't even really think about it unless you really just hate funguses and want to clean which is like you know i know people's um but uh it causes mad like confusion and madness like you hear just like a, a buzzing in your ears while it's around <laughs> So I think like just starts driving people it just starts driving people insane with its presence. And while all the other things that you could be thinking could be making you crazy, it's really this like you said, uh um just this like fungus that you probably wouldn't be thinking about. But then older back in the D and uh in D D, it could like being this fungus doorway thing is just one way that it can be. It can turn into pretty much its own self-sustaining cloud of acid uh, poison uh, that's effective, uh, that is effectively a cloud kill spell. So anyone just around it just starts dying. Um, and it had a variety of different like spells and mind control effects that it could do. That like, it wasn't more of like just a trap, like, uh, it was saying that lots of things don't even <laughs> like this thing because the old know, way of demons uh, is to think of like those seven deadly sins and them luring you by lust or your want of power. This thing is only too corrupt. Corrupt doorways, corrupt people, corrupt places, corrupt your air. And demons don't even like it because it just corrupts areas um, and corrupts people's minds. Like it doesn't try to lure things into the abyss as much as it just brings the abyss to other places and makes it terribly frustrating to uh, exist and think in. And it summons up other demons and things, which makes it very dangerous, like more readily than other, like I think all demons have abilities or um, to summon up demons, but this one just readily does it because its MO is just to make things terrible. <laughs> and corrupt areas this was like a more like a sentient assassin formless creature and i think even back when i was reading um of what it's like about in a uh, second edition it was saying that the reason why it's more of this fungus thing is not necessarily because the part of jubilex the overlord demon of uh formless yuck things is because this thing existed before even humanoids had shape this was back in the time of things being just blob nasties and when emotions such as pride and lust and uh, all that didn't even have much so it was destroy or eat stuff no isn't that pretty cool so this thing is nasty what made me think is when I was doing some research on, um, I didn't find very much, like maybe maybe I, uh, I didn't find the book that it was in in 4th edition, but 4th edition was pretty cool in the fact that when they gave a monster, they usually gave a couple different grades of monster, and they tried to give monsters their own little like subclasses. You had like controllers, you had, I think, brutes, soldiers, soldiers. Uh, strikers and lurkers uh, in a way that they're almost like characters that they have their they can you can have like a, a meat wall one and you can have a, a heavy damage dealing one and so i think today what i'm going to be looking at and thinking of like the older versions of the alkali is how like the wall one is that like lurker version of it but the i don't know the fog one or maybe even one that tries to take over your like and of soup and as you open it you're like ah shit demons and they all like flood out like <laughs> that one i think is pretty awesome but we'll see so is yours so what what do you so what's the concept of what you're working on right now is it like a it's a window lurker <laughs> yeah but right now i will think 
I was thinking that I just needed to warm up and get used to, again, <laughs> using the tablet, uh, thinking about lights and values, and about, I don't know, how to make this weird, nasty fungus thing growth on there. And after that, I think I'll branch out and try out what those other issues are or to figure out. But it was weird. I was like looking and in D and D, for those of you that don't D and D, um, like level twenty is like near max level that you get to. Uh, and so C R eleven, which this creature is in fifth edition, is pretty hard heavy. Like that is like um halfway to goddom. Um and I think in older edition it was like a CR fourteen. Like this thing is smart and evil and nasty. Why? Why is it CR eleven? Oh yeah, it does have a tentacle attack. Yeah, this is actually it. It has a brain. It tries to screw with stuff. It's not just like a fungus on the wall. It just pretends to be. <laughs> That's weird because its description totally just puts it up to be like a like a tutor or something. You know, just something that's just like. I exist, and if you leave me alone for too long, then I become a portal, and then the real dangers start falling through, and it's like, uh-uh, this thing's, like, annoying. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just think about, like, the buzzing. Like, I'm one of those people that really dislikes having on too many electronics around, because eventually, like, at some days, not all days, but, like, I can start feeling, like, the buzzing in my body. I'm like, ah, ah it's too loud in here. We need to turn things off. <laughs> um it's really weird. It's not all days. I'm glad it's not all days, but um, but I just being driven insane by this would be be crazy. Just like the buzzing in your head, thinking that like maybe I have a headache. I should just drink more water. But turns out it's demons. <laughs> so dumb. What are you trying with yours today? Just trying to enjoy um, yours? So I've all so since since I cool. since last week I tried So this was always kind of the idea that I had in my head where it was like it's gonna be this doorway. Um and then it was gonna have this thing, but I had to decide like how much of the doorway I wanted it to be corrupted. Mm -hmm. and such like that but I don't know it's, it's weird uh oh too many vertices yeah I should burr, 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 maybe this dream maybe maybe oh yeah oh yeah, it's crazy how, like, this creature doesn't see a lot more, um, a lot more play just because it, um, it literally opens the door for so much for the, play the player characters to, like, deal with. But I guess people, I guess story writers for the books and things like that, they just like the idea of, like, this demon just busting through a portal by themselves and just being like, I'm not waiting. I I want to hunt down the I want to hunt down some humans. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that would be an interesting kind of thing, trying to go around to this place, spreading vitamin C onto stuff and uh a little bit of holy water to try to like cure an entire place before big bad demon comes. But having to deal with like a whole town full of people going like, just bad shit crazy with loss of sleep, too much buzzing sound. Oh, that's a I just wanted to try I just wanted to try this out to see what it would look like in a like in a more pixelated sort of format. And I think that'd be really like really crazy on the eyes also if this was set in like the um uh what's the um 
not Eberron, but what's the what's the setting that's more um, cyberpunky and like futuristic? No, <laughs> Eberron. Is it? I thought Eberron was like not um, not cyberpunky, but steam like more steampunk though. A little bit, yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Cyberpunky um, description. Look things like laser swords and actual guns instead of like weird hmm. steam powered bolt throwers um but anyways the um i just like pixel pixelated the 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 goo portion of this thing and it was like that would be a crazy idea to not only affect the mind but also like weird out the eyes about like you know you you look at this door frame and you're like man i really gotta like wipe the sludge off of that thing but then like it like pixelates and like makes your eyes feel like they're crossing <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? That's true. I mean, hmm. All right. Let's... You mean like Shadow Run? But uh oh, Shadow yeah. Run. That's if it is. like <laughs> kind of like a I don't know. Demon technology. <laughs> Picking over little bits of and things that you don't know. I don't wanna. Well, let's just see. Oh, yeah. That needs to move. It's so gross. All right, so let's see. <laughs> no. Um, but I only don't mess with the decimate modifier because... I fell in love with 2.9's decimate modifier. Well, I think they merged it into the subdivision surface modifier or whatever that thing was called. What was that called? Multi-resolution. So in the mul um, I fell in love with 2.9's version of the multi-resolution function in the sense that um, you can, you know, you can subdivide the absolute bejeebus out of this thing and then later you can you know you can just freely go between the different um amount of subdivisions 2.83 it does that but um it's not as fancy <laughs> Um, I use 2.9 when I want to not do something that I'm going to, or how do I, how do I want to explain this? <laughs> um, I don't save projects in, in 2.9 because I don't expect anything to really be any of the functions that I used in there to be like solidified yet until it comes out as an actual update. Um, so I don't, yeah, I don't take anything that I create in 2.9. I have it on my computer, but um, anything I create in it currently as, as it's in the experimental phase, I don't take seriously. <laughs> better wait than sorry that's an amazing way to phrase that <laughs> uh, um oh ew what are you what are you adding <laughs> little gateway for little demons to come through 
or what is what is that low CR one? Glimmers. Those are nasty. Yeah. Glimmers are nasty guys. I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, I was trying to see. I was trying to test out what you were saying, and then remesh. So what's the difference between remeshing it here? Yeah, this is the same. Man, like dang old shoot man, menu the same dang old thing that the freaking scripting man, like dang old redundancy man. So the color scheme that you used for your little like um, portal thing is um the exact same color scheme that they used for the blob it's called the blob i'm s i am so fried right now like my mind is just melted <laughs> um do some coffee i did whatever most... upper you prefer <laughs> most food <laughs> most food <laughs> Nothing spicy. It'll make you very <laughs> uppity. But makes me uppity in a different kind of way. Um, but yeah, in the blob, they used the same because they literally used so they stop motion jam and marmalade. Um, <laughs> That's a genius idea. So they, I like yeah, it. it, and it looks exactly like that. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, because I cut that off for some reason. Where is my blender source? Yeah, I'm just going to take over real quick. Oh, you know what I can do instead of doing that? Because this is supposed to be our, this is supposed to be our shared window. I actually have one where it focuses on me. And my stuff. Nyeh. So now, He-Man, the world will only see what I work on. Uh, I'll just make you, like, really small, like right here. All right. <clears throat> So anyways, what I was saying was, um, or what I was saying under my breath earlier was that the, the remesh function in 2.83, so I'm in sculpt mode right now, and then they've got this, you know, they've got this little menu up here that I love to abuse, and they've got the remesh thing here. Um, you pointed out, <clears throat> or sorry, I'm, I'm dreaming of spaghetti, pointed out that in the layout come on <laughs> in the layout the re there is a the the remesh function also exists but you have to go into the object data properties but that makes me question is there a difference because it's the same it, it looks like the same menu to me but the fact that they're in two different like function tabs makes me question like is there a difference or did they just not want people to be super angry when they're you know i have to go all the way back to this tab just to just to remesh the thing and then i have to go back to the other tab like that makes sense to me the more i'm ranting about it <laughs> um <laughs> yeah all right, so let's see. I just want to test this out and see if it crashes my com or not my computer, but if it crashes my program. So if my window goes away, then that's exactly what happened. But I'm going to click on a vertice right now. Oh, wait, I got to go to edit mode. <laughs> Did I leave? <laughs> click on this. Well, no, I mean, theoretically, it should only close the program, not my entire computer. Click on single. I guess I could just highlight a section. 
And then let's see what this looks like. Because I've never done it this way before. Yep, yep. Doesn't like that. Let's just move it a little bit. Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> oh, it's doing it. You're doing it, Peter. Oh, nope, that's the entire thing. I don't want that. Let's shrink down the proportion. That scares me. I don't want to do it anymore. Uh Yeah, I'm I'm quitting. Abort. Ab abort the abort, abort. That scares me. So what I can do is I can I can move it down to um a smaller resolution and then just up the resolution like later in life. But I kind of like this tendril. Now that I now that I've been reminded that they actually do have a tentacle attack. I could just pretend that that's what's happening. It's it's preparing for the it, it's that that's the real back for the whoosha. is going to be my excuse for why I don't want to <laughs> why I don't want to mess with my thing anymore. <sighs> it was good, but um uh, my computer was just complaining about what I was doing before, so rather than just try to keep forcing it, well, not force it through, but um, keep trying to work through all of that, I'd rather just not for a little while. Take a take a small little take a small little coffee break. Maybe take a few breaths or two. Ask even a question, and then um, <clears throat> I can try again in like two minutes. Hmm. Speaking of, let's get a close-up of what's going on over here. So, um, so what's your what's your idea for it? It it's it's like a it, it took on the color of the of the wooden frame, or did you just forget, or did you just not? You're just too lazy to change the color. I I like working. Uh, monochromed for the most part, and it seemed relevant to just have uh, the demonic uh, eyes and actual portal be something else. No, we'll see if I decide to add color to it later. Uh, I've been kind of enjoying uh, colorizing it afterwards. Um, I find that I've been thinking a little bit more and it's been something i've been trying to do is think more of just like uh the values of light and dark and not try to focus too much on color but sometimes um sometimes i think color is a little bit stronger at, at emoting something but i think the emoting the like different portal and strange eyes is more important than emoting the fact that this fungus thing could be i don't know it didn't say what color it had to be like the manual it's green but you know, maybe there's different flavors mm, demon flavors yeah i, I kind of wanted to do like the the alkalith in my mind if i was writing a game i would describe it to the to the players as like there's this there's this gray almost silvery kind of you know growth on this you know on the wooden frame of this of this you know, of this cottage door or something you know hmm. but why gray and silvery just because that's the first kind of color that comes to my mind to like change it up a little bit, because I think red is too obvious of like that's that's a thing. Like we need to put <laughs> fire evil, to that. You know? Yeah, and green. You know the the book uses green, and so I kind of want to change it up a little bit. Um, the reason why I use green in my model was because um, it's a lot more interesting than gray and silver. <laughs> Especially when the world around currently is gray. And the only other two colors that I have are like this like clay brownish red, orange maybe, and then white. So, um, but yeah, like 
gray for some reason is just it's it's not obvious enough so that it would make sense that that's how it could go unnoticed for so long but it's also a color it's also kind of a shade that doesn't belong <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. or it could potentially not belong Okay. Well, I kind of get that. What color then would you want the eyes to be in this gray ass thing? Um, Famous thing. I think it would be cool if they were kind of like, um, like headlamps in a car to where they were, they would start off kind of, um, not black but like dark and glassy and then if something disturbed it you know then they'd turn on kind of like a lamborghini you know like the the lights turn up and they they'll flash red or something and then suddenly you know that uh oh you done you done goofed and then suddenly mm -hmm. you're getting hit by tentacles and mind <coughs> mind blastings i need water <coughs> not coffee <coughs> If I'm going to be talking like this. <laughs> <laughs> like regular? <laughs> uh, <sighs> I, I kind of want to see what, what a before, like, like this is the after photo. Like what's the before image of this window? Hmm. You mean without the broken bits of it? Yeah, without the broken. Because, like, the... I'm assuming that that rounded thing is, like, a wooden, like, like in frame. So I kind of want to know what the design of the window kind of is. I was kind of thinking of, like, how they did the most stained glass window design in the original work that was more uh, curved at the top. Uh, so I was juxtaposing this like square format and trying to put some curviness and I thought on the bottom would be fun All right. thank you I'm dreaming spaghetti I'm enjoying it kind of too but, uh, I don't know like I think I'm happy with it like it's definitely not finished <laughs> but uh, do you kind of want to like doodle other things because I looked at that and I was like, "That's a mirror." <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like a wall mirror that someone would like check their you know check that the angle of their hat in or something. Could which I mean yeah, that would it's put... a doorway to the soul. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was I was thinking that that would put a really crazy spin on um, Alice through the Looking Glass. If at the end of the story, you know, she looks back and the mirror, you know, the edges of the mirror looked back at her. <laughs> <You're> just like, <laughs> did, was I in a fantasy world or what? <laughs> did I really just go to the abyss? <laughs> Which that would also be really crazy if, if all of the Alice stories were just allegories of her being like sent and shunted against her will through the various levels of the abyss. And she's actually like a cleric or something, like, but she doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's let's test this out and see if it if I can if I can do it right, <laughs> or if I mess it up somewhere. Burr, burr, burr. So. Check to see if it's got modifiers. Doesn't anymore because I just was making an example of the multi resolution. Let's do a point two. Preserve volume. It reminds me, your Alice in Wonderland comments reminds me of when we were joking about. Like, how would you play out a, like, 
I don't know, we were talking about trolls and then three billy goats gruff and then flaming horns. And how strange it would be to play a game of like all the like childhood fairy tales and stuff, but have to play as like, you know, Alice or the biggest goat. I don't know. Didn't we? I do remember that conversation. I don't remember. That was when. Um... Oh my god, I don't even remember his name anymore. Um... Descriptions. I want to call him Alfonso for some reason. But that's not. That's not. Uh, that's not it at all. When we were playing at Ed, at um, Ed and Mitchell's place. I'm I don't think... really embarrassed now that it's escaped my mind that I haven't I haven't interacted with him in such a long time now. What? Carlos? Carlos! Holy crap! <laughs> Carlos went to Korea, right? Yes. One. Yes. Um I want to imagine that that conversation what? happened there. Well, I was watching some <laughs> nah, rooster that was like super old. We had that like Billy Groat's gruff conversation back when I used to live in like um, the North Long Beach house. That was like when we were first getting started in D and D, and we didn't even know how to really play. Wow, that circle was huge. What the heck was it doing that large? Where the heck am I going with this thing? Friggin' get on the door, <laughs> you stinking tendril. Oh my god, I'm over it. <laughs> That's a hundred times better than what I had it, but... That's what I was... Well, that's what I've started out doing with the G or Y. But then I just got over it. Aw, all these got destroyed. Oh, well. Should I just delete those then? Are those dead are those dead vertices? I guess that's true. But in your experience, are these dead vertices? <laughs> I guess they are. There's no way that the programs would be like, you used to have you used to have mesh there. Let's find out. Let's do a haha. -ha. Yeah, I'm going to end up deleting them, but just for ha-has, we're going to just remesh this thing anyway. <laughs> for the ha-has! So if you if you had to what Oh 
if you had to um let's say let's say there's a person in your party that's dying right and you find out that you're in you're in a small town and there's nothing around you but forest and mountains and it's like you're it's it this is the stupidest place for anyone to try to build a, a civilization um but the only person in this in the small town that can save your cursed slash dying slash whatever friend is this currently comatose cleric priest and the only way to get into his room is th is through a threshold that's got this painted on it so let's so you can give your you can give yourself a theoretical class but let's say you're also there with a with a dwarven paladin and a i don't know an elven fighter <laughs> Well, the orange thing is the same thing as the green thing. It's just in a different view mode. But, um... <laughs> okay, so first, what class would you give yourself in this, situ in this scenario? Uh, what class would you give yourself? Just real quick. Five, four, three... Two, one, a mard, <laughs> a mard or a bonk. <laughs> uh, can it see invisibility? I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> nope. Um, okay, so you're a, you're a you're a mard or a bonk, and you're with a you're with a you're with a paladin. Who I'm. <laughs> so how would you how would you get to this to this duder to this duder, that's gonna help revive one of your one of your one of your mates. Um, let me see. Are there any force teleports? And if not, how? I think usually if you want to teleport something else, you have you have to physically be touching that thing and then you have to teleport yourself. How is there no spell in D&D &D in which you just kind of like you concentrate on a dude and you like bamf them somewhere? All right, so the closest thing that I can think of is banishment. But like everything else, like Dimension Door, you have to be touching that person. Thunderstep, you have to be touching the person. Blink is on your own. You can't take someone with you. Teleport, 
they have to be willing <laughs> and you all have to be you know hands in a circle type type thing I guess the the other closest thing that I could think of is telekinesis in which you just kind of like your body is mine <laughs> and then you can like lift them up and then move them like forcefully somewhere like that's the closest thing that I can think of But there really isn't like a. Yeah. Oops. No, nope, no, it's the wrong axis. I want this one. make them think you stay <laughs> yeah that's a um what is that called there's a mislead kind of works that way except that's really high up there um i wonder Description say for this again. Mur, mur, mur. Incarnations, appearance, the alkalith, burr, 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 symbol of doom, the appearance. Based on the descriptions you've read, if one were to banish this this creature and then hold it for a minute, would it return to that plane or would it return to the material plane or would it return to the abyss? Because <laughs> it, it sounds to me like it, it like pop, it, like a very small portion of it pops into existence on to the material plane. And then it reaches back into where, you know, where it gravitates towards, which is, you know, theoretically Jubilex, I guess. So that to me would say that it could either that it could potentially stay on the material plane if banished because it was created here, even though it's, wow, that's really confusing. I guess it's, I guess so. But it never seems like they create portals in, like they never root, take root and doorways in the abyss and make portals into the material plane. It's always the other way around. So it sounds like they start, they start here and they make it possible to go back, quote unquote, back. <laughs> other portals to the material plane that that have been made by something else uh, i guess so <laughs> it's like it's like one of those things where it's like a tra you know it's like a little spore on a traveler's backpack it's like oh man i can't believe we we lived through the 13th ring of the abyss little do they know they're bringing back a little souvenir and it's like uh they really should have um customs <laughs> they really should have portal customs 
Did you pick up any strange spores or uh, any contraband while you were in the abyss, sir? <laughs> Did you know that when I was coming back from Germany, um, I was pulled off to the side for some innocuous reason, and... Um, the dude went through my carry-on luggage, pulled out a book that I was given from um, one of my German friends, and he started asking me a lot of questions about the book. And I was just like, dude, it's just a book that I was given. Like, if you think there's cocaine, like, in the, like, in the leaves or something, like, you're free to open it up. <laughs> That's a weird one. Look. Huh. Well, it was, it was like, more or less what like... What kind of questions? Did you read the book? Yeah, actually. It was like... Um, he okay. was like... Because he, he rummaged through everything and he picked out the book, you know, and obviously, you know, the title's in German, right? And so he goes, you know, where'd you get this book? And I go, well, I guess it's obvious that it's not something that came with me. But yeah, it was given to me by... It was given me to by a friend that I was staying with while I was over there. He was like, do you, do you know what this book is? And I was like, well, according to the title... <laughs> So hopefully that proved that I could read German well enough to read the entirety of the book. And so he was like, all right. And I was like, I didn't know that that was a thing you had to be wor you know, worried about of like crossing borders. Like usually it's like fruit and animals and stuff like that, you know, but it was like, it's a book. <laughs> that was kind of weird. It, there, there's also There's also the small possibility that it was I was literally just one of those like quote unquote random search type scenarios and he was just like uh and you know I gotta find an excuse for pulling him aside and he found the one thing that didn't really fit in with the rest of my leg and he was like, All right, I'll ask him about this stuff for like four questions and then I'll just send him off. <laughs> sounds about right. Cause that sounds like one of the more tedious portions of that job where it's just like you know, uh, damn it! This is the thirteenth person, and I gotta, I gotta question the thirteenth person. But this kid doesn't look like a friggin' terrorist, man. Like, god damn it! <laughs> you know, and then he's just like, all right, let me see. What can I, what can I ask him questions about? Not gonna ask, ask him about his shoes or his dress clothes. Here, this book. All right. <laughs> Where'd you get the book? Do you know what it says? Maybe it's one of those things that, like, uh, choosing something that seemed very pointless. They were just trying to see if you'd get stressed out. That but. would be very. That would be a very interesting test. <laughs> Do you think that? It, does it sound like you just wanted a good book suggestion? Yeah. That's also true. <laughs> um, do you think that the portal that it opens is just a random like area of the abyss, or do you think it always goes to the twenty second ring? Um, what I read is that it said that many creature, uh, many of the alkalith work for Jubilex, uh, so implying that not all of them do, <laughs> or not even all of them are made by Jubilex. So I don't know. I always like the idea of portals being um kind of fixed equivalences across uh planes so that's why certain areas are important because like i could open up a portal here but i don't i don't know this is just some old lady's house on the other side <laughs> yeah i'll leave that they didn't make it too easy if it was always just the place that it meant it, but I don't know. That's also how you'd want your portals. Also, that's how I want my teleport to just happen. I want it to work and not have to have consent. God, I hope nobody finds a sound bite of that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm bored of this one. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a good thing because it's 
11, it's 11 minutes past the hour, and that's pretty much as much time as I am forcing to keep you for, so, um, I don't know, is there any, is there any last things you want to talk about before we wrap stuff up, or? All this, like, extra area that I wasn't going, or that I was going to draw some other kind. Draw, draw for us, draw for us an eyeball. <laughs> an eyeball, singular? Well, what would what would what would a close up version of a, of this Alakith eyeball look like? I don't know. Let's see. Where where's the picture of this punk? Hmm. Okay. We'll draw some eyes. And then while you do that, I can figure out what our next monster is. Even though I think we discussed it last time because we had a slight discrepancy over what what alphabetically the next monster was going to be um what monster is next so we have the aboleth a bunch of abyssal stuff adult adult but we don't care about those yet adult 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 Oh, right, the alip. The alip. The alip. Came before this? Alip. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. No, because L comes after K. Come on. <laughs> um, That one's going to be difficult for me because it's like a... It's like a vapor ghosty kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, medium undead, neutral evil. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, we were discussing the the Alip uh, as a possibility and that it was just it just looked like smoke things. As well as we were discussing the air elemental, but that was kind of the discussion of whether or not air, uh, elementals are something different mm -hmm. um, or their own category that we want to take as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, we still, yeah, I still haven't come to a consensus on that yet. Um, but I don't know. I'm... We set the precedent with this thing of doing things separately. But I guess that's true. Because otherwise, why? why? Otherwise, we'd have to do fiend, like the entirety of fiends in one go. Well, not one go, but. Uh, um, we already broke also with the Aracorcra as uh, um, humanoid. Yes. Um, do you have any insight while you do this about the creation and or the design of an eye that you could share with me specifically and the audience in general? <laughs> I personally like just working a circle and then thinking about the that circle being a sphere. Uh, then once you have that, you uh, I add on the eyelids over it. Um, so you've already done the sphere and now you're working on the eyelid? Mm -hmm. uh, then part of if the sun is coming directly from the top towards it, um, light will hit this top part. Uh, shadows will be on the lower part right here. Light will again hit the bottom part of the, uh, or the top part of the lower eye, and then a shadow will start to form at the lower part just under it. So those are some of those base things how to do this. Um, I'm kind of ignoring tear ducts right now because this thing is nasty and <laughs> really cares. I don't, um, think, I don't think it cries. <laughs> that would be a really nasty thing of just watching a demon's cry. That's a, that uh, would be a that would be a, a cool, 
that would be a cool nightmare scene though to see the Alakith like not cry but just kind of like weep ooze down like you know down the surface that's gross Ew. I like it what is that violet <laughs> um I also I was also going to ask um oh balls I forgot um oh right um do you think an alakith would be able to mistake a book for a doorway and then make that into a portal i don't know about mistake uh how smart is this thing supposed to be it's got an because this thing actually might be of... oh i clicked off of it to find the alec <laughs> It has an intelligence of six. Six? Okay, maybe. Maybe a different stick. <laughs> it has maybe a wisdom not. of 11, so that's pretty standard for, you know, a commoner, <laughs> common peasant. But I feel like dogs and stuff also have that. Like, I don't think, I think we're reaching pretty high. Oh, oh my goodness. My computer just started to get all laggy. Doesn't like that I went onto this like wiki page. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a death I'll dog go has back. an intelligence of three and a wisdom of thirteen. Um, so maybe yeah. it would it, it could it could figure out the difference between book and not book, but but how crazy of a story do you know. think you could write if you just started to just incorporate? out like alkaliths into like storylines just like sending your players into different places of the abyss because it's like they think they're opening up a book and they're you know they're going into this magical imagination land but in reality they're in a physical place called the abyss you know in one of the circles of the abyss because they opened up a book <laughs> and they started reading it um mm -hmm. for a campaign yeah and just having and then suddenly you know and then finally like f like 13 weeks into your like into your ongoing campaign your players finally realize that there's this there's this weird little crusty thing that keeps you know that's on the on door frames and on you know on only certain books that they keep picking up and they're just like all right get a torch <laughs> <laughs> you know what i think like a glassy blue would also be a cool thing to stick in my gray gray crusty slightly metallic ooze that would be the alakith <laughs> as the alakith itself or like uh eyes within an alakith as the eyes yeah the the the, gl the glassy blue as the eye so it'd be this it'd be this kind of gray like this gray like it morphs between like this like gross ooze to this almost like 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 hard metal crust kind of thing like every once in a while so it just undulates between those two textures and then every once in a while there's just this little like like this little flash of, uh, not this little flash but this little bubbling like blue like this blue bubble that just comes up every once in a while to quote unquote blink at passers by mm. I'll look over at the stream while I'm drawing <laughs> But I don't stop making motions while I'm drawing. And like I'm just and then I look back, I'm like, oh, I just made some random things I definitely did not need. <laughs> nice. Um, do you know what a cuttlefish's eye looks like? Cuddlefish. Oh yeah, 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 a little bit. Yeah, 
think you could do one. Is that the vibe you're getting off of this? Kinda. It's just kind of one of those more like it's kind of like a goat's eye, where it's just kind of like a little. It's a little more otherworldly than just like the, you know, the the more predatory slit or the more humanistic pupil, pupile. That was just also curious because not a lot of people really pay attention to cephalopods, so. Everybody knows that goats, goats and sheep's eyes are weird as weird as heck. But not a lot of people know how alien, like a friggin' cuttlefish's eye is. <laughs> a cuttlefish. I don't know. You're right. Cephalopods are weird. I really love it when cuttlefish get their like, um, their super odd like hypnotizing color going. While they're like trying to bug out different creatures, I wonder how much effort that takes. Like, is it the same thing as like like a human trying to squeeze out a poop, or is it just like, <laughs> or is it just like, or is it like as much effort as it takes to touch your your thumb to your palm? You know, like what what's the effort scale in trying to like change your change your skin color? <laughs> Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I should zoom in. That makes things easier, but also shows me all the mistakes I make. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your 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 the the technique that you use with the 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 browns and the more rusty colors. Um it lends itself more easily for me to imagine that I'm looking at like a wounded like dragon or something or something scaly like a basilisk or something mm. instead of a more like mossy creature. But that yeah, could also just I be did the, not. That could also be the practice. color association too. <laughs> just after this, you're just gonna sit there and just be like, okay, moss. Moss. <laughs> Gotta do moss. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, didn't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've ever once had a reason to really draw moss. I don't know. Maybe drawn some thing. Yeah, it's 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 really it's I don't know. It's funny to me to think about a student going to art school and. Um, you know, being like, all right, so human anatomy, animal anatomy, anatomy, anatomy. And then they sit down to like their first job or something. Go, okay, we need you to put moss on three of these rocks. And then we need you to make a really elaborate flower that the main character is going to be focused on. It's be like, uh, uh, <laughs> crap. How do I do moss? <laughs> Which way that you're supposed to do that. <laughs> is having up a reference which i do not have <laughs> <laughs> i'm just being so the the really little moss strand good. that's coming down over the eye it reminds me a lot of like what frogs get stuck on them you know when they come out of their pond and stuff like they've got that that green foliage kind of on them every once in a while that's kind of what that reminds me of so it's getting there it's still it's pond you're getting to the pond scummy <laughs> pond scummy area yes you look Scum. into the abyss and it looks back at you and apparently it's a uh, pond scum mm. <laughs> hey man ponds are an abyss the oh boy yeah So if, um, for all the artists vocal in the chat and or hiding in the chat, um, if you want to go out and make an eye or make a, make a crazy little moss creature, um, I would really love to see that. And you can try to, you know, put that in a JPEG and upload that to, 
um, even star long on Instagram. And then we'll share that on, we might share it unless you make a note to us saying, please don't, <laughs> um, next <laughs> weekend. Cause I would really like to see how much better other people are out there <laughs> or what their, what their angles are at doing an eye or a mossy creature. Like, oh, that's monster. Cause I think, I think it could also be said that one per that a person could be relatively lazy as far as like the texturing goes theoretically, but be super in depth in like the, the lighting of their scene and still get a pretty good moss creature. Hmm. Oof. Uh, it's like uh, a yeah, Jubilex is more like a goo. But he is the lord of all things amorphous in Blimey, nasty, <laughs> and hungry. It's just um this this particular creature tends to disguise itself as like a moss or um an innocuous or a not so obvious kind of um, ooze or moisture. <laughs> moisture. <laughs> And something that could probably make this really easy is playing around with different brushes, but I like just using the one that I have. Of this creature, I think, I think when I think, uh, oh, like when I look at it and start thinking about how I want, how I would want to have this thing uh, in any of my games, I actually, I like the idea of, um, uh, of like it being like the secret big villain of the area and you having to deal with lots of lots of small demons and things uh while it is like spewing them out and letting them loose and destroying things and people making everyone super stressed and nasty <laughs> so i think that his goal is not to is not to trick other people to go into the abyss but to bring the like but to make the area of the abyss yeah, i think so <laughs> Um, all right i'm going I, mean, I think it'd be interesting if it like a uh, if the portal that it created was uh was something better than the place that it's making on the material plane and that would be a good like challenge to like oh this is like the one uh it's like giving a respite and you go and you're like okay this is pretty nice and then it, it eventually gets worse and worse and worse for the characters and you're like oh shit i missed the place that gave me headaches oh what happened to my light All right. Um, so at three thirty, I think I'm going to wrap this up and give you your closing words and send you on your way. I also have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. All right, um, 
<laughs> so yeah, definitely. Then, um, then sketch then up a thing. Make you know, make your own doorway moss creature thing, or just make moss. Um, I'd like to see that that texture process happen. Um, send that off to um, at Evenstar Long on Instagram. The um, burr, burr, burr. the reference image of the creature. Um, I don't know if this actually shows up unless you have the thing. Um, let me know if you're able to access that. Um, but because I own like a couple of these books, um, it might only be it might only be something that I can access. But otherwise, that's the that's the creature. Here's uh, a quick <laughs> Google search. Oh Jesus! <laughs> that has a bunch of stuff too. Um, shoot that off to even, and we'll make a segment on next thing looking at other people's stuff.